Alrighty. So I uh, I upgraded to the newest version of ZBrush 4R8, and uh, it's a bit different to Core. There's a lot more menus. There's a lot more features. I'm getting lost all the time. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. That's um. So the first thing I actually did was I changed all the buttons to green. And I am learning how to be a bit more smarter with my uh, saving, how I save things. I use a save tool now instead of instead of um, save projects because uh, projects can be quite large. God, what's going on here? Okay. Try again. Alrighty, so last night was the first time I got to play with this and I changed the buttons to green and I started uh, trying to sculpt this strawberry owl based on a picture that I drew last year. Right, let's see if I can load it. texture. Um, so this is the new ZBrush 4R8 and I'm still getting a bit lost, I'm not sure what to do a lot of the time. Um, where am I looking here? Desktop. Hi Dustin! Just trying to... Um, put a picture up in the corner actually but um, it's it's a new new program I'm not really sure how to use it oh there we go I want light box up so now I can put a reference up in the corner which is pretty handy and do all sorts of fun things with opacity and color picking and all of that stuff. Oh, there's some pretty cool emotes you got there, Dustin. <laughs> uh, and it's Shift Z to turn that on and off. And so now I can have the reference up in the corner, which is pretty handy. It's something you can't really, you can't do in core, at least I haven't found a way. Um, another thing is I changed all my buttons to green. And the way I did with that was I went into configuration and I said we can enable customize. And then I went to colors 
and I changed all my colors up it's all based on whatever color is selected here and um, then you click the button for whatever it is and it will change the color and um, to make that so that it loads up every time I go back into Cogonfig and uh, store config that reminds me I need to switch my car insurance ouch car insurance but, uh, I don't want Just red clay I want gray or I could do the obvious thing and switch to SDAO. Oh, Hi Mike, how you going? You might get the so I've just been saying a few times now, this is the new ZBrush 4R8. I'm you might have to fork out a well lost. Oh, <laughs> Trying to figure out what to do. The spotlight feature, I don't know if you know Mike, you can put your reference up in the corner now, which is really cool. And just, um, or anywhere. And then there's a whole bunch of projection stuff you can do with it, which I don't understand yet. learning some hotkeys as I go as well. I changed all the buttons to green. I moved some of the brush brushes down here. Uh, I don't know if you've worked that out yet, but enable customize and then um, open your brush brush palette and then um, push down, I think it's control and alt and then drag it to wherever you want it to, to go. And then um, once you're happy with your user interface, you go um, turn that off and then you store config and it should load up the same every time Every time you open ZBrush. And you can also save it in anywhere. Um, I don't actually want Trim Dynamic there, so we'll just pull it off into the work plane and it disappears. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here. Um, if we, I like the live boolean stuff's pretty cool. So here's a cube, a huge cube because my uh, owl is so tiny. Um, let's make it smaller. Oops. Select the cube, make it smaller. Put it down. Oh yeah, cool. So then I can turn this into a, a subtraction. That little half moon there is a subtraction. And then I can turn on live boolean and it shows me in real time what it looks like. And I can even just see what's going to happen as I work. So I can sculpt on that and uh, move it around and do whatever I like and it's not it's not done yet it's just a render of what it will look like which you can turn it into a usable mesh later which is pretty cool um, that's got to be one of my favorite things about this that uh, pushed me over the edge to get it um, yeah what else? So I'm still getting used to it. There's, it's like I said, it's it's the same but different to core. So it's a bit confusing sometimes. Um, so yeah. Hi Pete, you're not late. I've just been going over changes from core to to ZBrush R8. I mean, apart from all these ridiculous extra menus. <laughs> I have yet to work out where everything is. Um, I changed the buttons to green and you can put um, reference images around the place and, and all this cool stuff, hey? And yeah, and the live booleans, which is just beautiful. Oh yeah, I saw that, Pete. Awesome. Um, I 
Uh, yeah, Peter, if you uh, message me later, I can give you access to the um, the brain file that doesn't have the doesn't have the robot on the back. Uh, I mean, you can probably scroll down and find it, but um, I can give you access to that now that you've changed your Patreon level. Oh, a drop bear logo. That sounds cool. All right. So I'm trying to figure out where, which way to go with this. I've, I've just blocked it out. All I did was I um, pulled in a, a sphere and then I used this brush and just sort of pulled things out and blocked it all in and moved it all around until I had this basic shape. And then, um, and so that's where we're at now. And then I renamed all these subtools so that I sort of know where I am. I'm going to turn live boolean off because this is better for the minute. So I'm not sure if I want to dynamesh or if I want to subdivide. Hi Chris! Like I said, I'm still coming to grips with all the new ways to do things. There's a lot more freedom in the full version. So I can just subdivide. And then uh, get my move brush. sort of uh, start pulling its shape out a bit better. Maybe uh, why isn't clay build up working? Um, that's weird. Let's try clay tubes. Tail. Oh, what's going on? We're in edit mode. On the body. Yeah, there's so many buttons. Move. Okay, the move is working. Why isn't the other brush working? So confused now. What if everything goes wrong when you're live? I tell you. Um, let's have a look here. What if I delete lower. No. If I go back. If I dynamesh. Nope. Everything is not working. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna close it and restart, see if that helps. Oh really? <laughs> to refresh the page. I think it's time I change my background now that I'm not working on Pinky and the Brain. Oh, 
<laughs> what am I doing? Fun, doesn't it? Okay. It won't break this feeling down. If I conquer this my way, I devour I surround. If it hurts you just a little, then it heals you. Why is it do this? Disappointment is the anchor. Resolution is the sun. Always when it's on stream. Was working perfectly last night, and now it's all gone crazy. Pull this owl in. Doing something. Okay. Let's try all of this again then. Subdivide geometry. Divide. Change the size of my brush. Maybe it has something to do with that spotlight picture, I'm not sure. It's the big button. Oh yeah, the character, so it's it's actually just something that I drew last year. It was just came out of my brain. It's just a it's a strawberry owl. <laughs> and um, I just thought it would, had nice easy shapes to try and uh, get my head around the new program. if it is that actual if that is the problem let's uh, load it up again desktop this picture <clears throat> didn't mean to spoil the mood Spotify friends oh, but if you're in the mood to save you can spot a great end of financial year deal at your participating Ford dealer 
like the Ranger XLT double cab 4x4 for just 56,490 drive away with an upgrade to auto absolutely free, but only Pretty until June there. 30. Private buyers um, only. Prices are recommended. Conditions apply. To find out more, click the banner now. All right, yeah, there. cool. It's um, all done. I don't know how Next we ended place. up streaming at the same time as the community stream. Unfortunately, this is the only time I can stream, so whoops. Yeah, it's got something to do with that spotlight. What? If I turn, turn it off again. Oh, where's my cursor now? Yeah, okay. Polish anything. What was that shortcut key for it? Still need to learn it better. Who knows? Okay. These birds sort of have a bit of a puffy chest, these owls. I still want it to be sort of strawberry shaped though. And then his tail is supposed to be a leaf. Um, subtle tail. Alrighty. How oh, are you liking the ZBrush upgrade? Oh, Travis, I love it. It's so good. Um, it's just that I'm very lost. <laughs> There's settings that I don't know what they do, and um, like I just had this bot light up. Oh, look, I got texture loaded. Texture off. Shift S, Shift Z. <laughs> I can't remember how to turn it back on again. Oh my goodness. Alright, I know how to clear this. This is Control N. Yes. Okay, I remember. So if I zoom out and then move this up here and sort of put him like this, I can push Shift S and then I can just sort of. Now there's just a picture there in the corner. It does nothing, it's just, it doesn't update live or anything. Um, yeah, it's it's just there. But again, I can't sculpt because I've got, I've got some setting, it must be some, some setting that just stops me from being able to sculpt while that's up there. I'm 
build up his sort of eye ridge a bit more. Turn my brush size down. So I think maybe change his eye shape a little. Scale them a bit. Bigger eyes. Back. Uh, the music is from Spotify and it's a playlist that I just found that was called Copyright Free so here's hoping that it is actually okay for the stream. So I don't know what any of this music is, it's got um, 611 songs. Uh, yeah, it's a um, playlist by, by Tom Stoddart. Tom Stoddart. What was I doing? Eyes. I was doing eyes. <laughs> yes, it's a little bit catchy. I should actually um, if I bring this over here and show you guys. I've got this area around the eyes. I, I'm not sure if I should actually bring that out as another tool. It might actually come up a bit better. A bit like these eyes are separate from the body. And sort of bring it in behind. Turn to evil. <laughs> I had to fix it. It's just his eye shape. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> oh no! <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. It might get better later. Let's have a. Uh, I, I could click back on his eyes. And. Oh yeah, so if I use the arrow keys up and down, I can change the sub tools. That's pretty cool. Back onto geometry. His eyes a bit low res. I can sort of soften this curve a little. <laughs> Yes, I did print Ickis. I print, I, I did. Uh, I don't know how well the details show up on the camera, but there he is in all his 3D glory. And he stands up. I haven't released the file yet because I'm not sure if I want to um, release it as a Patreon reward. I might do um, the other the other are real monsters with him and make it a, like a like a bust of all three not a bust that's the wrong word but, um, yeah so Ickis and the I forget all the names Crumb and the other one that looks like a big candy cane all together maybe So there's a few brushes in here I need to explore to um, I'm sure there's a better way than what I'm about to do and I could try chisel, I don't know, maybe um, Who knows, so I might, what I might do is Change my draw size down and start masking off. A 3D mesh with subdivision history may be partially Okay. Turn that off. Oh. Okay. We'll get there, eh? We'll get there. Okay. That's looking a bit better. So I think what I want is to have masking on. Figure out how to draw this out now. Oh really Peter? Yeah, send me a PM and um, we'll work it out. I do accept commissions. Uh, there are a few dependencies at the moment because my, I'm time starved, but um, as long as the uh, deadline is 
not too close so I can certainly work on something for you. Oh, the coffee monster that you drew? That looks so cool. I like it a lot. So what I'm doing here, I'm just trying to mask off the shape that I want. Just see if I can Let's do some weird stuff to this hat. A mascot. Oh, everyone needs a mascot. Absolutely everything's on sale at Freedom. So hurry in and save on over 7,000 products with up to 50% off mattresses and sofas from All just right. 649 to find any excuse. Now we got sort of a basic shape guy there. Freedom. Check out this week's fresh market picks at Woolworths, like locally grown broccoli for only $2.50 a kilo. For this and other great fresh market picks, visit Woolworths today. So I'm sure there's better ways to do this, as always. It's all a learning experience.
just laughing because I can hear my son gurgling in the background. It's very cute. Hey Ripcord, how you going? I'm just um, finding my feet in the new program, ZBrush 4R8. Um, I was using ZBrush Core before, 4R8 has loads of menus and buttons that just weren't available in the other program, and a lot of really cool features. And I am currently working on making this uh, strawberry owl that I drew last year into a 3D thing. I think uh, I quite like the beak already. So the transition from core, there's things that are the same, obviously, um, it's because core is a cut down version of ZBrush, but um, the amount of things that are different is, is very overwhelming as well. So I mean right now I'm still using the same sort of things that I used to do in core, um, same sort of processes, I haven't really gone too much into new ways of doing things. I've brought all my the brushes that I used to use in core down here so that I can feel a bit more safe and <laughs> you know it's such a such a big such a big program um, just finding what all these things do it's it's huge I was just sort of I, I may have jumped the gun by um, getting to the full version so quickly because I was just just starting to get comfortable in core and here I am trying to, trying to do new things in 4R8. But 4R8 has some 
really, like I was saying before, some some beautiful sub features. So if I can, uh, I showed this off before, but um, do it again. One of, one of the cool features of ZBrush Core, ZBrush full version is this live boolean. So I can see I can see what this square is doing. I've just turned it into a subtraction. And I can see what it's doing in, in real time. So if I'm in in core, as soon as I did a subtraction or an addition boolean operation it was permanent there was there was no backsies you couldn't go back and undo it it was it was um, you had to get it right first time but now I can sort of work out oh no I want it over here a bit more I want it, I, I just I want to cut out this <laughs> look at this, this is great check this out so um, and and I can go play with other things and then come back to it and move it around again and it's non-destructive so everything's still there that, that just makes me laugh so much. Look at that, it's a big grin. But uh, yeah, so that's that's live bullying is pretty cool. But, um, oops, what have I done? Opening things again? Uh. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's that. I'm just going to delete. Delete that square, I don't need it right now. And there's a whole bunch of other things as well that I, I just haven't got to. There's a whole heap of new brushes. Um, it's totally customizable user interface. Like all my buttons are green, they they come orange. But the green's better, right? Yeah, I think green's better. all sorts of new things that I, that I want to learn about, um, like uh, remesh, you can de-remesh and like, change the topology. Hard to say without doing it, but I'll have to learn how to do it first <laughs> before I can show you properly. I had a little play before, but it's, uh, like I say, I'm, I'm not quite there yet. You like the orange mic? I almost ended up with pink or a purple, but I was determined to find a nice green. <laughs> uh, yeah, Z Classroom from Pixelogic has a whole heap of stuff, but um, my favourite is actually a YouTube... Uh, he's on Twitch as well, but the YouTube videos store for longer, don't they? Um, let me see, I think it's Michael Pavlovich. Michael Pavlovich. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Michael Pavlovich, and um, he has loads and loads of videos. And what I'm going through at the moment is Intro to ZBrush Part 1, and there's a Part 2 and a Part 3 somewhere. Maybe I lost it part three so, and it goes through so many things and he's really good he's um, a bit more fast-paced than the Pixelogic Z classroom I get really bored during the slow monotone voice of describing that I'm moving my mouse over here I, c I can't watch those um, so I watch Michael's he goes a bit faster and I just watch them again or go back if I don't understand anything and then he, he's got um, also full sculpts that he does on his stream uh, he, like I said he's also in Twitch and um, he's got these 30 he's just put out in the last three days two days um, 31 videos on ZBrush for R8 all the new features that you can do so it's just he's, he's a really good resource I suggest going there absolutely Alright, 
so his wings. So I'm, I'm trying to use subdivision levels because I've always used Dynamesh. So instead I'm using subdivision levels to try and make my big movements with the low geometry, low resolution, and my smaller movements with the high. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I, I just I can't follow these really slow tutorials. It just it drives me batty. I wonder if I should pull his wings down to the floor as well. Yeah, maybe. He will also print better with his wings down there. Oh yeah, Pete, what I do... I, at the end of the day, you're not going to find your way around until you actually do it. Um, but what I what I tend to do is I just I binge watch a whole bunch of tutorials and things so I can before I even touch the program I just I just watch all this different stuff I might read about things I might join a forum and uh, I just saturate my life with with these resources before I even touch the program and then I find uh, Are you ready to I'm a little bit acquainted career? with it already it just sort of absorbs in. So instead of being confused and following step by step by step, I sort of absorb a bit and then come back and try and do some step by step stuff later. And it may or may not be right for you. I don't know, it just seems what I'm comfortable with. Yeah, I think he looks better with long wings. So I might try the new chisel brush. Um, we got chisel. This one. This is another really cool thing with the new. Try to my draw size down. Um, ve vector displacement brushes. Oh, jeez, lazy mouse. Lazy mouse. Okay, so stroke. Lazy Mouse. I'm going to turn the radius down to one. Maybe, maybe eight. Um, try that. Turn my Z intensity way down. Let's see what we can make. My brush size is too big. Chisel brush probably too too strong for what I'm thinking. I should probably look up a reference of a strawberry. Do 
that. Look up a reference for a strawberry leaf top thing. Strawberry top.
now we're on the duplicated one that doesn't have any subdivisions. And then we're going to pull up a cylinder. And split, unmask. What mesh is partially hidden? Try again. Split. We're split. Split. Unmasked. Okay, and now we should have just a cylinder. Delete this one. Delete that one. Somehow we ended up with still this pink thing. Okay, so that's fine because what we can do is split last again. Delete that thing. Yes. <laughs> I think I've just deleted it all. Anyway, I've got. Uh, okay. Can't undo my foot. Okay. Here we go. W. Alright, yeah, okay, so I've got a cylinder now. Excellent. <laughs> After all that, we have a cylinder. was the last time I saved? A long time ago. Good call. So instead of saving projects now, I'm actually saving tools because it leads to a smaller file size. So I just saved the tool here. See, I've, I've got my thing to come up on the other page. And we'll call him Owl2. Thank you very much.
if we can split hidden. We can split hidden. Why won't it let me split? Group split. Alright, cool. So now if I move this down, turn this live boolean back on. have a circle. Circle in the middle. Alright, we're getting somewhere. I love that sign. I'm so glad you made it. Don't let the coffee go cold. I need one. Look, I've got a hot drink here and it's cold. Mm. No, I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah. Cold cold hot drinks. Alrighty. Definitely blinking lights. USB drink warmer chiller pads. Yeah, I could actually make one. I've got some, um, what are they called? Pel Peltier. It's hot on one side and cold on the other. If the name escapes me for the minute and you, you run a current through it and one side will get hot and one side will get cold. And uh, definitely um, I could make one. In fact, it could be possible if... if um, Fred 13, Peltier, yeah it is Peltier, that's what I thought, um, makes one with a flashing light with a timer, it could actually remind you, <laughs> it could just flash every I don't know, 10 minutes or, or 5 minutes or something to remember not to let your coffee go cold, or even just to turn the Peltier back on. Use an old heat bed drink now yeah exactly um, what I was thinking actually this tail right so, so I saved it didn't I save yeah like an Arduino Nano hidden in the back of the sign or something that'd be, that'd be fine or if it's just a timer for um, if it's just a timer for lights you could use a 555 timer with some couple of capacitors and resistor. 555 timers are brilliant. So useful. What was I thinking? I'm thinking about something. My brain's just suddenly switched off. Um, proximity warming alarm. I should make some electronics on stream sometime, hey. I love electronics. Okay, so the key to keeping your drink hot is threefold. Um, first you need the hot plate. The mug has to be flat on the bottom, yes, that makes sense. And use a mug cover to insulate. Yeah, the only problem is once your mug is covered, do you remember it's there in order to drink it? <laughs> You're shocking. Shocking yourself with the electronics. Well, do low powered electronics stuff, like uh, do 12 volt. Low power 12 volt, 5 volt systems. You shouldn't, you shouldn't really receive a shock at all. <laughs> I'm going to try something because here we are learning. Um, I'm going to find find the tail. Oh, 
am I trying to do here? I don't want to. Okay, so I'm on the tail. I'm going to go down to geometry and try this seeing free mesh thing. So currently you can see sort of it's a bit stretched up here. And instead of dynameshing, I want to try Z remesh. So I don't know, I don't really know what anything does. So um, let's have a bit of a read. Target bit polygon count slider defines the approximate number of polygons that a retopologized model will have. The target number is approximation because the exact polygon count will be determined by the needs of the specific model. Okay, so five is probably a bit high. Let's, let's let's go 10. Let's see what happens there. Let's adapt. With the adapt uh, button activated, no, Z remesher will give the adaptive size settings a higher yeah. priority yeah, than the target around, polygon count. Get a few quotes, make sure they cover uh, everything I need. Oh, which will enable. You are aware it's enabled by default. Elephant standing behind you, right? Yeah, right. Don't ignore the obvious, Greg. Buy yeah, I'm not sure what that means. So we're just going to leave it on. And you'll get $100 off. Curve. Collaborating with curves. I don't think. Has that got curve brush or just the curve of the mesh? A low value will attract your topology edges towards the curves. And, uh, sorry. A high level will strongly guide the polygon flow. And we'll just leave that as it is as well. And let's just push the button. Oh, look at that! So now we've got nice little squares. Does it mean I've still got my... Okay, so the subdivision history is gone, that's fine, because I remeshed the whole thing. And then if I turn the line off so we can see the... That's pretty cool, huh? I like that, so it's going... It was 11,000 points, active points, and then when we remeshed it, it came down to 8,000 points, but it looks nicer already, doesn't it? So Z remesher is not available in Core. So in Core I would have used Dynamesh. Which is fine. Dynamesh is fine as well. Yeah, I think it looks smoother as well, yeah. Oh yeah, Mike, what I did was I, um, so if I go back two, three, where? Oh, hey, if I put my line on, I can actually see where I went back to. Alright, so that's, that's what it was. That was my stretched out topology. And I went to the Geometry tab to Modify Topology, and I, Modify Topology? Sorry, Z Remesher. I went to Z Remesher in the Geometry tab, and I chose a target polygon count. I think I had it on 10, but now it's on 5. We'll see, see at 5, should be fine. Um, I had a read of a couple of these things, but I wasn't really sure what they meant, so I left it as it is. And I push the button Z remesh. And then that changed it to all of these nice, nice, uh, even sort of squares everywhere. So it's changed the whole geometry of the object to something a bit nicer. And then if I subdivide, like it's extra smooth. Yeah, so that's Z remesher. I think that that's a really powerful tool. If we can get the hang of whatever these sort of things are. Oh, we can half the count as well. I turn my frame back on. The line and push half. I'm not sure if it did anything. Maybe because I got my geometry right up.
Anyway, yeah, so that, I think that's really cool. to stretch. It's important to stretch. Okay, what's the time? So it's 10.50 in the morning over here. So another thing uh, you can do is just hold down Alt and tap. If I put my poly mesh on. If I tap on the subtool that I want to work on, if I'm holding down Alt and I just tap it, then I don't have to go through the subtool menu and try and manually find what I'm what I want to play with, which makes things a lot quicker. Is there a way to lock certain subtools open in the right window? So, so you mean like when I open that, everything else closed and it moved it around? I think if you hold down shift when you open it, yeah. Um, and then so they're all open now. If I click on a rain mesh. Okay, there, there is a setting. There is a setting. I just got to remember where it would be. Um. go through everything just quickly huh quick info hotkeys interface it's likely to be in here I think sub palette pop-up palettes one with one open sub palette activated all others will be collapsed so if we untick this Then it should should now things should just stay yeah okay cool so now things stay open and you have to manually close them if you want to reduce it down is that is that what you wanted Mike is that, is that what you mean this is better I'm gonna leave it like this On it. Yeah. Yeah, this is much better. Cool. I know where that is now, so if you need me to go through it again, I totally can. I think Core left them open all the time from memory. Oh. I have to learn how to make this proper, proper, proper. Okay, let's just hide everything. It's pretty messy under there. Yeah, I think so.
the next thing I'm going to do is um, set up some hotkeys for the brushes. I see a lot of the other people that stream, they have um, hotkeys instead of having to go down here and select the brush they want. They just push like an Alt and R or something and it pops up with the, their brush and it makes their workflow a lot quicker. Read to apologize this one too. Why not? Hey, let's try the same thing. Just see what happens. This is great. So I've just um, re z meshed the star, and now my smooth brush is working a lot more predictably the way that I want it to. Perfect. What I'm doing now is I'm actually sculpting or moving around the if I turn live boolean off. I'm I'm moving around this uh, cylinder, that's what it is. And um, live watching the effect that it's having on my star, which is just so beautiful.
found an instructable for a $30 DIY macro keypad. Oh, that sounds good. So, um, yeah, because then, then you could program the keys to do either bind to the program or to do a set of instructions. Yeah. So you could just push a button and um, it might inflate 20% or something, I don't know, maybe? I think this is masked, so we just unmask that and move it down like all the rest. Cheaper than a stream deck, yeah. One for streaming and one for 3D design. Oh, that makes sense. 22 macro keys. Yeah, a friend of mine has a mouse that has 13 buttons on it. For 13? I think he can play a lot of games just with one hand. Because of the way he binds them. You know this um, stalk at the top was actually a mistake. It was supposed to just be one side. And I did I did a mirror and weld, which I'm, I think is in geometry. Mirror and weld, which copies the copies the left side and duplicates it on the right so that everything's symmetrical. And I didn't realize that I had that visible when I did it and it turned into this like a heart shape and I was at first I was a little bit annoyed but um, I quite like it now because I think it's going to add to his cuteness I hope anyway and then there's with the brushes, um, so like here, chisel 3D. Th this is another cool feature, like I was saying before. In um, if we, you can actually create these brushes. That okay? I need more geometry, but um, that just uh, what they do is it distorts the vector. So all the, where all the vertices and everything, it distorts the vector and you can just drag on pieces of, of geometry that you've created and you can create these brushes yourself. There's, there's a dog's nose. <laughs> but um, and so that's really good. So what I plan to do is for the seeds, um, for all these seeds, what I'm thinking of doing is creating, creating one of these brushes that has a seed on it, and sort of uh, brushing them on to my model like that, instead of having to recreate seeds all over the place. So I think we, we can use spray. That's a bit close. What if I change my draw size? Oh, yeah, any anyway. I'm sure there's a way I can sort of do this rather quickly. Um, color spray. I'm not sure what that did. Um, and then there's drag dot. So I could place them wherever I choose. 
At WA Health, <laughs> grant just yeah, I saw Ashley's stream. That was so good. She made um, a crab claw. I was so impressed with that. I didn't think it was going to work. I have to go back and watch it again to figure out how she did it as well. Don't be a renter. Call WA Housing Centre. Conditions apply. Builders registration. But, uh, yeah, the crab, crab claw. Um, what else did she make? She made a mushroom. That mushroom was amazing. Yeah, the shoulder pads like the 80s. 80. <laughs> So, you know, I always push S to change the draw size, but I think a better option is to hold down spacebar because you get all these other um, options come up. So, uh, focal shift. And uh, all, all, all the fun stuff that's up here, as well as some fun stuff that's off to the side, and even some of these buttons. He had bad memories of the 80s. I only spent five years in the 80s, and from what I remember, it was pretty good. eyes? Oh, there we go. Too many games. Now all our trips are lost. I think I want to turn symmetry off. Oh, <laughs> I forgot what brush I was using. Alright, let's see. Masking. Must be a setting in mask. I should be able to see it. Now here we stand and hover on the edge. Oh, we're just a drop in time. That's really weird. More mysteries. Well, I can see it when polyframes on, so we'll just it's polyframe. Turn off live boolean. Oh, it's the live boolean. It's the live boolean. It's messing with my mask visibility. Sharpen the mask. Acting weird, time to save. Good idea. Save as Al three.
I mean, do I want him looking down or? I think he looks a bit crazy looking that way. Looking down could be interesting. I think he's just going to sit on my bench, just on my desk. Okay, so let's look at uh, extract. So where would that be? Um, I think it was in masking. Here we go, it's in sub tools. Yep, extract. Okay, so that's a bit big, so let's go down to. Half that size. Could be okay. Yeah, let's go with that. So I've got I've actually got two options here. Um I can have his eyes out. Or I can have his eyes dug in. And this is the beauty about this live boolean is I can sort of flick back between them even and just decide if I want his eyes out or in. So I think I'm going to go with out. All my other models have them out. Um, I haven't decided what's best yet. And some of them, I mean, it's hard to tell how much is enough to pull out the detail but not look too weird. Glue googly eyes in there, yeah that'd be cool. I'd have to sort of um, I could get a proper circle in there and that'll be that'll be better. And then try and find the print size that works for the googly eyes size. <laughs> yeah. Like some of those um, famous paintings where they follow you around the room. No matter where you go. And I could even uh, make my brush size bigger than two. Come on, uh, then uh, I'll turn this light fully off so I can see my mask again. There was my mask. Sharp.
<laughs> Maybe poke those ones in ways. But I don't think that detail will come up. It depends how big I, I make the print. Um. I kind of like it though. I, I kind of like that. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, I tell you what, wearing headphones for a while makes your ears itchy. So I'll, I'll save this as owl. I always just go consecutively. So, so you see here I've got owl one, two, three, and now owl four. Um, let's have a look at. Um, it was in. Projects miscellaneous 3D brush templates. Okay, and it's um let's look up strawberry seed. So you see they sort of dig into the skin and then bulge out. Oh wow, check that out. The strawberry's growing. That's really cool. I've never seen that before. I wonder if it's real or if it's a trick. So I've never tried to do this before, so I don't know how well we're going to do. I think sculpting comes on this side that the blue line's coming off. Be the front face. Let's turn the topological off. Um, let's think about this for a second. If I go to the brushes and the clay brush, turn my brush size up. So let's I'm trying to figure out actually the shortcut keys. I haven't learnt all the shortcut keys yet. Where did my mask? Oh, it's right here. Sharpen. Oh, it won't sharpen. It's, that's all it's going to do. Okay. So what I'm trying to do here is protect the edges. Protect the edges um, because if the edges lift up, it's going to make funny artifacts on the model. Um, let 
that's uh, clay. That's clay work. Alright. Cool. Feel paralyzed. So, is anyone else um, playing around in ZBrush at the same time as as me today? they're a completely free version um yes and no you can have a, i think it's a 45 day free trial um for zbrush um otherwise sculptress is free it's not the same but it gets you used to um the more organic nature of of um modeling as opposed to the cad sort of software, it's a bit more intuitive. <laughs> I've made it all lumpy. Yeah, Sculptress is free. Standard brush is way too strong. Check out this week's fresh market picks at Woolworths, like locally grown broccoli for only two dollars fifty a kilo. Yeah, well, I for came from a CAD software background, picks, so I was using Woolworths Fusion today. before this because I have. Um, short arms and long pockets but um, I'm really really enjoying the flexibility of, of the organic or the more intuitive style um, you, really it's difficult to use ZBrush for things that require proper dimensions but you can do um, sort of hard surface modeling if you like I think probably the best option if you want something with dimensions is to make the base model in Fusion and then uh, export it out as an OBJ or an STL or whatever. Change it to an OBJ and bring it into ZBrush to do all your fancy detailing on top. I think that would be very powerful. Oh, that's right. 
brush palette I used recently. Oops. Clay. I'm the king on my own throne, throne, oh, 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 oh. king on my own Lazy mouse. Lazy mouse. So we go lazy mouse. The radius is quite low. Just bring it up to maybe 12. Yeah, okay. And that just helps even out my stroke. A bit nicer. Yeah. 
No, you won't be able to, to make it um, parametric once you export it out of ZBrush, but it should hold units. And then, um, so if you design it with the correct dimensions and then bring it into ZBrush, um, and then you can. I haven't worked it out yet because I haven't tried, but there's. The ZBrush uses a unit that, that um, is something, but you can set units, and, and there's uh, a whole bunch of cancel stuff that you can. Oh god, <laughs> I just opened it. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with regards to 3D printing and units. I think there's a plugin over here. Um, 3D print hub, no. Text. So unit ratios, yeah. So you should be able to get it to the same scale as what you imported it when you take it out anyway. Hopefully. Metric it just makes more sense. It's a lot easier to work with, I think. I mean, I grew up with metrics, so maybe I'm a little bit biased about it, but at the same time, base 10, everything makes sense. Just move the decimal point over. And dealing with fractions in terms of accuracy is ridiculous to me. She just simply cannot get exactness with a fraction. That's the good thing about 3D printing community, we all work in metric anyway, so I think a lot of us, e even even your American fellows and gals have uh, converted somewhat. Oh, that's pretty good, Pete. Were you um, taught, taught both in school? Because I know back they used to teach both in school. Yeah.
Okay, so I'm not really sure. It looks okay for the first try. What do we do? How does this work? From mesh? And then if I go... my owl Inside out, isn't it? Just hmm. gonna open the alpha menu. Oh, I don't know how this works. Why oh, it's doing that.
something really weird happened when I saved it. <laughs> oh. And now it's just like, man, you gotta have that time where you just like disconnect from the, from the scene, just the, the, the race. Like, and it's a race I'm not going to be able to fix this. Head, I'm going to have to know? start but again. To step away from it. That reminds me. I need to switch my car insurance. Ouch. Car insurance. Just re just renew it. Or I could do the obvious thing and switch to SGAO. Uh, a bit risky, because you might... You might get the cover you expect. But you might have to... You might have to fork out a packet. Oh, Greg. Don't ignore the obvious. With SGIO, you get cover you'd expect at a price you wouldn't. Always read the PDS from SGIO. Okay. I wonder actually if my quick saves has. I smell no. too much. I drink too much. I tell myself that I can stop. We could see clearly now. 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 Three liters a day of coffee. We could see that's a, that's a bit serious. I drink too much. I tell myself. Yeah, I could see that 16 hour work days. I only did that. Oh, I did a 16 hour work day once and I did a 21 hours consecutive once as well. And it's not a good idea. If your boss asks you to do 21 hours, say no. We could see clearly. We could see clearly now. We could see clearly now. Clearly now. Clearly now. We could see clearly now. We could see clearly
You know, there was, um... Some sort of setting in here about morph targets. Uh, there we go, morph target. We store a morph target and then go up to stroke. We've got lazy snap on. And what we can do is something pretty special with the Damien standard. I, I don't know if it works with Damien standard, but it definitely works with chisel. Let's find out. Where you can sort of continually align where you left off. <laughs> it's a strange song, that's for sure. I haven't minded the music so far. It's um, it's not too distracting for me. I don't know how you guys are going with it. There, does that sort of look seed shaped? EDM is not a real thing. Oh, 
What what is EDM? EDM. What are we talking about? Music? Techno? Electronic dance music? I don't know, I'm guessing. Dumb name Americans give to techno, yes. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Alright, 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 I think that's good. This time I'm gonna save it as a project because I want to come back and edit it if I get it really, really wrong. I just put it in here. It's not really the place to put it, but... Um, seed BDM. Save. I saw on, was it Ashley, her stream, if we rename it up here, we should rename when we append it to the chisel brush. So from mesh. Still that it's still doing that thing. Okay, so maybe there's a better way. I don't know how to make this work. Why it's going in funny directions. Does it have to be facing facing forward? Turn the a broken heart that was already shattered. Here we go. There we go. That looks better. rotation on your new icon doesn't match the stock ones. Yeah, that's right. So what it was, was because I still had the edges masked, um, it, it, I don't know what it did, but it was causing that rotation error. And once I unmasked them, then, so this was with the edges masked, and then with the edges unmasked again, I've got this seed. I think that's going to work pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's my first brush. I think I'm doing all right. How to clean up the brushes. Anyway, that's 
that's another another problem for another day. Let's load our most recent owl. Because it's the wrong one, this one. Back when I was a first home buyer, we got nothing. Not a cracker, not a brass razoo. Now, 2017 is the year of the first home So I can buyer. just... At WA Housing Centre, there's a 15,000... However I see fit. ...just for being a first home buyer. And thanks to the lowest flame and interest rates ever, house and land starts from $230 a week. Screw, I got FOMO. Whatever that means. Don't be a renter. Call WA Housing Centre. Conditions apply. Builders registration 9769. That's really cool. Alrighty, well, I'm going to leave it there. Um, little man's getting a bit fussy so um thanks for joining me today on stream um and helping me explore through all the options which is really cool we made a uh, vdm brush which is this seed at vector displacement vector displacement brush while we're trying to make this uh, strawberry owl yes it's a strawberry <laughs> a strawberry i like that a lot um and we also had a play around with vector uh, with uh, Z, Z remeshing and subdivision levels, uh, and the live live boolean as well. So that's really good. Thanks, guys. Um, I'll catch you next time. Uh, definitely the same time next week, same time, same place. And uh, if we're really lucky, every now and then I get some extra time and I can stream midweek as well. So um, I'll see you then. Ciao.